have started the third part it was called biosensor in that area i have discussed in uh, it is a, a six different aspects at first i have told you what is biosensor so all of you um, have seen that uh, it's, its definition and how it was evolved a scientist uh, uh, that is a Leland C. Clark who actually first published one enzyme electrochemical biosensor in 1962 by entrapping glucose oxide in dialysis membrane over a Clark type oxygen electrode. Then slowly and slowly this thing got evolved and potentiometry and electrotransduce and these things also uh, evolved. The definition was finalized. The definition was uh, finalized after some time uh, under IPEC in 1996. Then, depending on the uh, popular application, these are the various uh, types or these are the various uh, known biosensor, uh, like um, that is a glucometer, ortroport, rapid screening for infection diseases, biochip, and immune sensor, like pregnancy detection kit. You might have seen the ad of Perikan News. I also have told you that why it is so popular because it is so rapid and continuous, high specificity, less unsafe uh, or reagent is required, then fast response. And then I have told you ideal feature of biosensor. It should be affordable and it should be high sensitive, very specific and uh, user friendly. I have to given you a very interesting, uh, very amazing uh, one cartoon, uh, one uh, not cartoon, it should be one representation where uh, you should be your, your uh, machine, your uh, biosensor should not be give any kind of true pos uh, false, pos um, true negative or false negative or false positive result. Okay, with this cartoon, I have tried to tell, tell you that uh, what is uh, type 1 error, what is type 2 error. So your uh, machine should be give this kind of result, true positive. If the lady is pregnant, so the machine will be uh, detect. It will give the result that yes, you are pregnant. If the machine may take some sample from the an old age man, it should not be give um, the result that yes, you are pregnant. Okay, here you can see this is called false positive. Right now in COVID nineteen, uh, lots of uh, people are getting positive results. Okay, those who don't have the corona, who are actually not uh, uh, suffered by corona, this is called false positive. And then false negative, somebody is suffering from a corona, but it is saying that no, you are not suffering from corona. Lots of people died recently because of the false negative result of RT-PCR. So when you make some biosensor, your machine, your biosensor should be free from this three things. It should be uh, give this thing. Then I have told you other things. What are the advantages and what are the classification of biosensor one by one? I have told you we can classify in four different categories, optical, electrochemical, piezoelectric and magnetic. I have told you what are the various uh, sub classification of biosensor. You can recall all those things one by one. And uh, after discussing all those various sub classification, uh, I have actually uh, I have taken to you to the next part of advantages and disadvantages. What are the advantages and disadvantages of various uh, classification of biosensor? Then I have told you uh, how actually it is made how a biosensor actually made, what are the uh, working of, uh, how a biosensor will work, the working of biosensor. Then I have mentioned to you that this is how it will work, the structure of biosensor, and then I have told you the application. If you can recall, these are the samples we are actually analyzed by using this bioceptor. It will be converted and it will give the data in the display. Then I have told you the applications where you can use biosensor, what are the recent, uh, most recent advancement, and I have told you that how you can save the life of an old man who is uh, in his home, but nobody is here for taking care of him. But still, by using biosensor, you can uh, check at real time about uh, his health. I also told you that in the new era, how you can be able to use this technology and uh, what are the recent advancement. Then after that, I have started our this part called protein engineering. In this part, 